everyone, and welcome to a very fun and exciting new episode of Motion Tutorials. I am Sean Frangella, and today we are taking a sneak peek at the top five new features of Cinema 40 R17. So it is August 2015 at this time, and Cinema 40 R17 was just announced. There's lots of new features that I'm really excited about. I got my iced coffee. I'm ready to go. So let's dive right into the new version of Cinema 40 and get looking at some fun new features right away. And here we are in Cinema 40 R17, and let's get started on some new features. Number one, the new color chooser. So in previous versions of Cinema 40, when you were picking colors, you had your basic RGB slider. Now, natively in Cinema 40, you can adjust colors much more precisely with this multi-option color chooser that we see here when we're making material. So how this works is we can check on and off these different options for our color wheel, spectrum, or even sample it from a picture. And as we turn those on and off, it'll add and remove those. And we can change the sliders to be red, green, blue, hue, saturation, value, or degrees Kelvin. So if we're making a material, this gives you a lot more control to really tweak your colors, pick the one that you're the most comfortable with, and really hone in the color you want. And one nice little update you'll see as you're changing the color, it'll show you your previous one. The new color chooser definitely gives you a lot more control over picking your colors and lets you quickly and easily get to where you want to be with materials. Now let's get to some bigger features. Number two, the new pen tool. Gone are the different spline tools that we saw in previous versions and they've been replaced by this fully rebuilt pen tool as well as some additional options like sketch and smooth and arc. So to see this in action, let's quickly draw our, our always favorite martini glass spline. And if we're working with this and we grab our pen tool, you'll very quickly notice some updates and improvements. If we start to draw, you'll get this preview to where you're going, which is a nice little update. And if we click and click and drag, you can see it's previewing where our next line is. And we can quickly draw out a little rough spline in our scene and click and drag to make multiple points. And then when we complete our spline, we can go to object mode, drop that into a lathe, and then we get our martini glass. Now where there's even more improvements is when we're making further adjustments. If I turn that lathe off, and if we needed to pick this spline up and draw more from the end, which happens pretty often, if we get our pen tool and already have this selected, it's gonna automatically pick up where we left off rather than creating a new spline, which is nice. And if you just need to make adjustments in our point mode, it's gonna pick that up pretty intuitively. So if we hover over a point and drag, it's gonna give us a preview of how we're changing that point. And you can see how that changes. And if we need to make really precise edits, we can double click to break our tangents, shift drag to only drag one side of our tangents, command click to add a new point that we can then move around and preview, hold shift to add or remove our curves and even just drag out the lines that we've drawn. So you can pretty quickly make your changes and draw a lot more precisely and accurately and intuitively with the new pen tool. And one nice little bonus of how this works is that these new pen tool options work with snapping. So if we had an additional three-dimensional object and we get our pen tool and enable snapping and polygon snap, then if we start to draw in this new sketch mode, it's gonna snap onto our geometry in 3D. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of new improvements to the new pen tool and spline tools. And if you want to get a more in-depth look at those, be sure to check out my full video on the new pen tool to get a deeper look at those updates. Moving right along, number three, the variation shader. So one seemingly small but very powerful new feature is this new variation shader, which you can find under effect variation. And using the variation shader, lets you change a material's property on multiple objects or polygons on a single material. If we take a look at this setup here, we have a cloner with a single object and just one material on it. And our material options are set to variation, which is creating all the multiple colors on these different cubes. By using this, we can set variation to adjust the color of different objects in a cloner on a single material to change things like their hue, brightness, and gradients, change the variation by things like just full objects like we see here or even polygons if we want to change each side 
And if we take a look at this cloner and turn off this cube and on this sphere and do something like take down our hue from really high, which is giving us this multicolor option to just change the saturation and lightness, we could do something like get these bubbles and just get different shades of blue. It's a really powerful new material effect option and you can do a lot with it. And if you want to get a deeper look at the new variance shader, you can check out my full video on that one where we'll get really in depth with everything you can do with this new option. It's a really cool little material editing option that I think you could do a lot with and gives you a lot of control while keeping things really simple and clean. Number four, meta ball improvements. So this is a pretty fun one. What we have here is a quick little meta ball setup. And if you're not familiar with meta balls, what this will do is let you take multiple objects and combine them and based on the proximity of the objects, the geometry will start to blend together. And how this works is on our meta ball, there's this whole value that will control how close they will start to leak into each other. And if you need to make even more precise adjustments, you can add a meta ball tag, which lets you change that value for each object. Now, the new options on this tag are we have this type, which lets us change the way in which this is being combined. And what this lets us do is if we drop in a cube to this meta ball, usually it would just drop in the corners. And now in this tag, if we change this to line, it's going to create meta balls on different lines of the geometry. If we change it to triangle, it's going to triangulate this whole thing. So now you can use a meta ball with any objects with this, which is pretty cool. And the additional update on our meta ball object is there's this now accurate normals, which if we do a quick area render and check that on, will help smooth out any problems that we might have with our normals. So you can do a lot of fun little gooey animations with a new meta ball and meta ball tag settings. And if you want to check out a full video on how to set up this cool little meta ball scene and animation, check out my full video on R17 meta ball settings where I'll get a lot more in depth on how to do this and everything you can do with the new settings to do some pretty cool little animations and 3D design. Number five, animation improvements. So if we take a look at this quick little animation with this cube bouncing back and forth, and open up our timeline, you'll notice some changes right away. One nice little improvement is if we have our timeline open and press spacebar, it's gonna play and stop this so it's a little quicker to work with. And previously that would change between our F curves. So now that's tab. So we can pretty quickly toggle between playing this, stopping it, and change our view between our keyframes if we like that and our F curves if we need to grab and adjust the way that these are easing. And if we take a look at our mini timeline and grab these three keyframes, there's some new options for how this interpolation is happening. Previously, by default, it would ease these in and out, and now there's some additional key preset options. And we can see those changes if I open back up my timeline. If we change this to Auto Key Classic, this is what we get by default and now if we change this to auto key weighted, it's a small change, but it's gonna take into account the time between each of these and make it proportional to its position and time. So it's a little improvement on how that easing is being created over time. And even with the default settings, will help you get a little smoother and more proportional easing on your animations. So there are lots of fun little improvements in R17 like our meta ball and our spline tools with our new pen tool and our fun little variation shader. Lots of cool little new features. And that's it for my top five new features of Cinema 4D. Is there a new feature that you're excited about or you want to learn more about? You can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and you can hashtag those R17. And if you want to keep up with new features as well as my weekly motion graphics tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to dive deeper into a couple of these new features, be sure to check out my other videos on the new pen tool, variance shader, and the meta ball object in R17, where we'll get a deeper look at each of those. And be sure to check out any of my other tutorials to learn more about Cinema 4D, After Effects, Motion Graphics, and VFX, and other new apps. 
as always, thanks for watching. This has been Sean Frangella with my top five new features of Cinema 4D R17. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.